Hello everyone and welcome to SC Geek Bootcamp. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about functions. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SC Geek begins now. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about functions. Up until this point, uh, most of the code that I've shown you has just been uh, inline calls, uh, print lines. Uh, you know, not not so much on the way of making reusable code, which is one of the places where functions come in. Uh, there are, there are other ways of making reusable code, which I'll talk about in the next episode, which would be object oriented programming. But that's for next episode. So first thing, we're just going to start with, off with a very simple function. Uh, actually, I have def, um, you know, the keyword we use for variables, same for functions, although I could instead use int here or string or pretty much any variable. And this is what's actually returned from the function. Now, if you wanted to return nothing from a function, you could use uh, the keyword void. Um, which isn't particularly useful to return nothing from a function, but you know there there are reasons why you would do that. Uh, not going to get into that in this particular uh, tutorial. So uh, right here, we're just going to use def for the time being, and then right uh, after that, we have the name of the function. So we're calling increment, and then in parentheses right here, we have parameters that the function takes. Right now we're taking an integer number, uh, but we don't actually even need to specify that here in Groovy. Uh, so we could just say number. And uh, then we have a block statement here, as you can see. And within this, we can put pretty much any code we want uh, in terms of uh, you know, conditional if statements, loop statements, defining variables. Uh, things of that nature. And I'll talk a little bit later about uh, the idea of scope uh, with with uh, reference to these parameters and things that are defined within a function. But for now, let's, let's just take a uh, look at this uh, basic example. Uh, right in here we have a, another keyword called return, which means we're going to actually return something. And we have uh, number plus one, so we're returning number plus one, hence increment. Uh, something I, I showed you before uh, was that we could actually increment using uh, plus plus, which is you know an operator. Um, but if we do that here, we won't get what you would actually think out of this uh, function. But before I get to that, let's actually just run this function. Uh, here we sh let's see. Ah. Here we have a print line. We have the function that we're going to call, and we're passing a parameter of five, which you know is our number. And if we run that, we get six. Now, like I was saying here, if we use plus plus here, we won't get what you would think we would get. Uh, what we're going to we, we get out of this would be uh, printed here would be five because of the way plus plus works. So what actually happens is this increments and then assigns back into number. But the return statement actually returns number before the increment actually happens. So if we run this right now, we get five. So there's a couple ways around this, but it's something that's worth noting and being aware of. We could actually put the plus plus before the number, and if we run this, we get the expected result, which is six. Or another thing we could do is if we do number plus plus, which this does the assignment back into number before we get here, and run this, well, we get six again, which you don't really see that, but if I change this to four, run that, you'll see it's five. So this is a, a very a uh, basic example of a function, just you know, simple, not not a whole lot going on. So let's go to a more advanced. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it's more advanced. It's a actually a. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's delete all that. Okay, so 
what we have here is a uh, different example, a little bit more complex than the last one. Uh, we're defining a variable message. Uh, we have a uh, function here called reverse. And down here, we have a, uh, we're calling a reverse with message as the variable. Now, here's something to be uh, aware of with scope. So, um, well, actually, I, I should let's just go through the uh, the actual function first. Describe what it does, and then I'll talk about scoping of variables after that. So, this takes message, which is you know just test here, and that takes this as the input parameter. Like I said, string here is kind of optional. Uh, there are reasons for having that, uh, and reasons for for not. Uh, one reason for having that is if someone else looks at this, uh, you know, just the this is called the signature of the method, then uh, they would know what ver what message actually needs to be to actually run this function. Uh, but you know, if you were you doing something a little bit no more dynamic, where you could take in you know different objects here, uh, then you know you you don't have to actually specify it. But for w right now doesn't really matter. Uh, we ha First thing we do is we define a variable and right now we uh, set that to be a uh, empty string. So this is a string with nothing in it. Uh, one thing that's actually important to note here that I should have said in the variable episode is if you do not uh, actually assign anything to a variable, what, what it gets by default is the value called, oops, gets the value called null. And null is basically just the unassigned value. It's it means that you know nothing is assigned into that variable. Uh, you can't call anything on null without getting an error. Um, it's something to be you know thoughtful about and a lot of people make errors where you know they'll define a variable and wonder why they're getting null when they're trying to loop over it or something or acts you know run a function on it or something like that. So right now we're just going to assign that empty uh, the empty string and then we're going to go uh, take message do dot each which will actually go over each character in the message. Uh, and then we're going to take uh, the reverse message, which there's you know different ways of doing what I'm showing here. This is just a naive way to show you you know how to actually do do uh, you know a particular function. So and what we're assigning into this reverse message is uh, it, which would be each of the characters um, plus whatever is actually in the reverse message. So this will actually do our reversing for us right here. And then we return the verse me the reverse message. So this will actually run that. So if I run that, I get T-S-E-T, -E which is the reverse of test. So right now what I'm going to talk about just uh, while we're here is the um, idea of scope. So message, which I did define up here before we actually get into the variable, uh, not the variable, but before we get into the function, I should say, uh, this is not actually valid within this uh, function. Now, just to differentiate, I'm going to call this, we already have a message variable in here, which is not the same as this one, which, you know, as you, uh, which didn't make, make any difference here, but actually, let me... Uh, hmm, how should I explain that? Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, let me get take this and make this message two, and this message two. So, and if I run that, I still get the same result. But say I wanted to um, print print message. As I said, this is not val valid within this scope. So within like uh, just what I've shown you right now, this is like a, a just a, a functional scope of, uh, you know, this script, uh, it's just, it, it has like function scope. So everything that's defined within a function is only valid within the function, but anything defined outside of a function is not valid. So when I it try to access message, it doesn't have access to anything outside the function. So if I run it, I get an error. Now, just the, by the same token, we have reverse message. 
So if I tried to access that outside of uh, this, if I tried to um, print line reverse message, I'll again get an error because you know reverse message is not defined outside the scope of this function. So you know that's one thing to keep in mind with you know variable scope is it's usually per function and actually everything in within a script is kind of like in a function so to speak it's something that groovy just gives you uh by default whereas in uh different languages you have to do you know different setup to actually you know and do the initial script uh depending on what language you're using um but also, I'll talk uh, more about uh, scope a little, a little bit more about scope when I talk about object-oriented programming in the next episode. But for now, that's this is just you know a little example showing you how to reverse uh, a string. You know, just a naive little example. So we're gonna move on to something I hinted at in the last episode, which was recursion. So. Let's bring this up here. Now, what recursion is, is you'll have a function, which I just called it, you know, function here, not a great name. Uh, one thing I should mention about uh, names of functions and variables is uh, try to come up with good names, like descriptive names, so people have an idea of what your functions and variables are used for and, and what they do. So, but in any case, I have function, and when you call uh, call the function with inside of a function, I'm calling you know itself. This is what's called recursion, and this actually creates a loop within itself. Now, uh, something I didn't really talk too much about uh, is the fact that you know you can have any code within these blocks, including calling other functions or calling the function that you're actually within, which is recursion. So what we're going to do here is we have you know the call to function which is five so you know that'll be you know the number t parameter so we'll co come in here be five and we have a conditional where you know number is less than ten which five is we'll print uh, print the number so we'll print five then we'll call the function again with number plus one which would be six come up here and the number is six so six is less than ten so we print six you know, etc., and you know, uh, so on, and basically, this is, so what this call will do is print uh, five through nine, and then you know, out here it will actually return. So what this is called uh, in recursion is called like the base case for recursion. So yeah, the well, so the, well, no, actually, the base case is usually where you end. Uh, you can flip this around and have like the return be the base case, but this is where we're calling the the function. Um, so basically, let's just run this, and you'll see we get five through nine, as I explained before. So uh, recursion, you, you might wonder, like, why is this useful? Uh, just offhand, there there are uses for this. Um, you know, one p particular instance that comes off the top of my head that uh, I haven't shown in here is, you know, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, lists before, but there's also like uh, the idea of a tree, which is another uh, data structure, um, which if you think about like uh, a file, uh, you know, folder, uh, files and folders within your uh, operating system, those actually follow a tree-based structure where you can have, you know, folders within folders which have files in them, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to actually, you know, do something that, uh, you know, goes, uh, like, say you want to, uh, you know, delete a, you know, top-level folder and have everything deleted within it, a good way to do that would be to use recursion. Uh, because you could, you know, call the function that would, you know, delete the the first one, and it would actually see what's inside it, and you know, pass that to itself, and you know, until it gets to the very end, and go, you know, basically return up. Um, let's see. 
another thing uh, to just mention in recursion, which is kind of outside the scope of these tutorials, is the idea of tail recursion, which is essentially just a another way of doing a loop. Uh, you know, it's just if, if I set this up with the... Uh, like the recursive call being the last thing and maybe having like a base case, which would be like my base case here is really return, uh, you know, where, where you don't satisfy this. But if I had a conditional, which was my base case and I had the function down here, it actually starts making this, you know, function look more like a loop, which is called tail recursion. And there are, you know, many examples of that. But uh, that, that's much more depth than I should go into here. So that's just a, a brief tutorial about functions, which allows you to do code reuse. Um, so next time I'm going to be talking about object-oriented programming, which will be the last uh, episode uh, in this series. And I'll talk to you next time.